Paul is a veteran artist and also an, 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 an ex-student of ours. And so he shall be presenting his talk tonight, The Meaning of Spirituality in Art. Towards the end of his talk, he will be having a conversation with Mr. Petru Faruja. And uh, Mr. Faruja will be expanding further on his uh, field of expertise. At the end of the conversation, if you like, and if you have any relevant questions, you can put them forward at the end of the presentation. So now I kindly ask Mr. Victor Gallia, head of College Network, to give his preliminary introduction. Thank you for a lot for the invitation. I am really honored to be here with you at the Malta School of Art. Uh, it, it's exciting also for the fact that we are having an interesting discussion from an ex-student of the school, the product of the school, who now um, is a renowned restorer at Heritage Malta, etc. You'll hear more about him from Christian Attard, I believe. So uh, I, I, as like you, I am looking forward for this interesting, I'm sure it's going to be quite interesting about the spirituality in art and the meaning of it, etc. from the experts. So, and I wish that the School of Art keep on taking on such initiatives, because such initiatives um, not only enlarges the ethos of the school, but also give the opportunity to the general public as well as our students and staff to appreciate more our own culture and the and the art itself. So I'll pass on to Christian Wright to introduce our guest. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you for 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 your short 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 talk. Um, yes, um, very soon, Mr. Tuan Espanol. Actually, the, the name written under him is Umberto Butigi. So. <laughs> Where's um, <laughs> where is the name Umberto Botticelli? That is that is twenty that is twenty twenty Espanol. So yes, twenty Espanol is 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 actually an ex student of the School of Art. So like most of us, he was trained at some point at the at the School of Art. He is also a qualified conservator and restorer. And I think uh, and I think twenty Espanol is going to talk a little bit about both because he is both an artist in his own right and he is also a restorer and the conservator and somehow these two sides of of 20 uh, are somehow reconciled in 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 his in his in his art as he was telling me a little while ago it is typical it is um it is something that he does repeatedly that his experience as as a restorer what he encounters as a restorer as a conservator also informs his works of art. So if he's restoring a great picture, like a, a Le Valentin picture, that picture somehow remains in his soul, in his psyche, and somehow, without copying, obviously, but that would somehow inspire his own work. The materiality, if anything, that Le Valentin used in the 17th century somehow informs his own, his own work. Now, obviously, this is a subject that intrigues me a lot, intrigues us a lot, the connection between spirituality and, and art. Actually, the course we are conducting at the moment, and some of the members here um, are following it, is exactly about that, trying to find some sort of spirituality in, in art. And yes, as we all know, this one will, will soon be telling us it is something that it goes back to time immemorial. Art, I think, at its very intrinsic, uh, it has this very intrinsic quality of trying to give us or to search for some sort of, of spirituality. It happens throughout the ages, from prehistory until, until today. But that's enough um, introducing. I think we should give now the floor, as they say, to Tuan to Espanol. Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Victor. Good evening. First and foremost, thanks for inviting me to give this presentation about the meaning of spirituality in art. So, Christmas is behind the door, no? And I would like to start this 
presentation by defining the difference between Christmas and the spirit of Christmas. Christmas is essentially a religious feast, no, the birth of Christ. The faithful are invited to reflect on this great sacred, sacred event when God was made flesh. The spirit of Christmas encompasses a much broader perspective. For example, Charles Dickens in his novel, A Christmas Carol, emphasized the need of generosity and compassion towards mankind. A more secular Christmas prevailed in the second half of the 19th century, where shopping began to assume economic importance. Therefore, Christmas incorporates many aspects, some with no connotations with its sacred origin, no connotations, connotations with its sacred origin. Whatever may be our beliefs and feelings, am I right? Am I right to say that from weeks before, it is this spirit of Christmas that we feel most? Spirituality resides within the individual. And what we personally feel at a particular time or period. Therefore, spirituality does not incorporate only beliefs or things associated with the sacred, but is also the way individuals seek and express themselves. In art, the expression of an inner feeling is achieved through form, no, with what we can relate, with what we can see. But not only, not only. Kandinsky said, and I, and I'm going to quote, that art is also the expression of the spiritual atmosphere, of the spiritual atmosphere of a, of a particular period or circumstances. A spiritual atmosphere. Therefore, art forms and characteristics evolve from the culture of the time. In one sentence, art has to reflect its time. So let us discuss a little bit these two paintings. So on your left, we have Grant Wood, American Gothic, and on the right, Barbara Stevenson, the Apple Valley. What are these two paintings expressing? What are these two paintings expressing? Both echo the Great Depression of the 1930s, where steep declines in industrial output and employment occur. This started in America and then it spread all over. It was a global crisis. So on the left, we see a husband and a wife dressed as farmers, as failing companies led off many workers. And these two people here are humorously looking miserable as if they are in a great depression themselves. The other painting, the Apple Vendor 1933-34, echoes again 
this Great Depression by reflecting on the decline of the economy, mostly built on industrial profits. The industry was facing difficulties and thousands and thousands of jobs were at risk. So people try, tried to earn their income through other means. And here we have the Apple vendor. But still in the background, you can notice the representation of the industrial world. Now in silence. Now you have chimneys there, but not functioning. Now in silence. Therefore, these two paintings are in different ways reflecting their time. Such expressions are intended to create a response from the viewer. But what kind of response? So we now delve a little bit into aesthetic judgment on how we see and analyze things. In our case, with works of art, dealing with works of art. How do we see? How do we analyze works of art? The 18th century philosopher Immanuel Kant stated that aesthetic judgment is based, is based on a feeling. Feelings are the experience of our emotions, but there are also taste of what one ought not to like or like. As you all know, this is highly subjective because, because we are different persons. So I think that it is true our cultivation and education in the arts that we can form a true judgment whether an artwork is genuine or not. An apple by Cezanne could be more spiritual than an image of the heart of Jesus. We tend to mix spirituality with the sacred. These are two separate things. But I think we agree, we all agree that looking at Cezanne's painting, I mean, one immediately noticed that there is something beneath the image. There is a soul. While the image of the heart of Jesus is is, is pretty much on the surface. It's pretty much on the surface. On the other hand, on the other hand, a spiritual religious work of art could inspire even non-believers. A spiritual religious work could inspire even non-believers. And the case in point is Giacomo Manzu. Here we see a detail from his bronze doors in the Vatican. A spiritual religious work of art, a spiritual religious work of art, would inspire even non-believers. And Giacomo Manzu is a case in point. So here we see a detail from his bronze door in the Vatican. Manzu was well aware that, that art especially public sculpture, because he was a sculptor, has the potential for shaping ideas and believes, and believes, and not a artist, and believes. Although his forms are a close reflection of the fascist movement, he managed to subdue these connections in favor of a more universal content. That is the redemption of man. This is Kandinsky. He managed to detach himself from realism 
marking the beginning of the non-objective art, abstract art. This type of artistic language challenges the viewer to be taken in solely by the shape, by the color, and texture of the artwork, and, and relate them to our emotions and experiences. In other words, what do we feel in front of such artworks? What do we feel? I remember once a young lady came to visit one of my exhibitions and she was taken in by, by one of my abstracts because she said, this painting reminds me of my experiences, listen, eh? when I visited the Niagara Falls. So, very, very far away from my intentions. But this is how it works. This is how it should work. Expressionist forms in art may not only be detached from real objects, but could make art free from dogmas. That is the way how things are to be portrayed according to treaties, according to conventions, according to rules, whatever. It was really difficult to show your work in the French Salon exhibition during the 19th century, particularly. I mean, the impressionist work, the impressionist works were, were, were labeled as vulgar, as vulgar. They were not up to scratch to the Salon rules. So they were rejected. Other examples, for example, here we see two versions of the Dead of the Virgin. One on your left by the Flemish artist Mikiel Coxy, and on your right, a detail from Caravaggio. So, the Virgin on your left side is lying in a decent pose, as if she is sleeping and not dead. The apostles, together with an angel, are meditating around her. The fact that the Virgin was taken up in heaven with body and soul is, or is, is already there in the picture, already features in the picture. So everything is in tune with the decorum of the subject, with the decorum of the subject. On the other hand, Caravaggio's version is disrupting. The version is sprawled on the bed. The apostles look sad and in grief. Fate seems to be far away. The painting was in fact rejected. It was rejected. Caravaggio was more obedient to his inner feelings, whatever we agree or not. That's something else. And therefore, he went against conventions. Profound spirituality in art can reach more than just its contemporaries. The greatest art moves people beyond its current time. Nationality and style become of a lesser value, of a lesser value, as it is more the spirituality of the context, of the content, that becomes universal. The spirituality of the content that becomes universal. So here we go through some pictures of great works of art. So here we have Michelangelo, the creation of them. 
Gian Lorenzo Bernini, Ecstasy of Saint Teresa, Rembrandt, Self-Portrait, Our Caravaggio, Saint Jerome, Edouard Monet, Impression Sunrise, Pablo Picasso, Guernica. So these works of art are very much alive, although many years pass from their creation. They are still part of our humanity. So the experience of what's behind the form is only possible when compositions are guided by the inner spirit. If there is nothing to give from within, you tell me, there is nothing to take or little. This could easily happen when importance is only given to the painterly or sculptural abilities, abilities of the artist rather than his inner feelings. The external form of a genuine work of art should mirror, should mirror the painterly or sculptural qualities, qualities of the inner self. As otherwise, a search for a meaning, a meaning, that is, what am I, what am I feeling in front of such artworks? What am I feeling? It would become impossible if there is only abilities and not quality. Do not forget, we relate with what we see. We relate with what we see. So, ability versus quality. The former is about skills of how to represent things, while the latter is the standard of how things are realized, realized. Imagine scenes which are not realized, but only represented. I mean, you can, you can tell for yourself. I mean, here we have Van Gogh portrait. I mean, we see a realization of the person in this portrait. While in the Lady Diana portrait, we have only likeness. Likeness. According to philosopher Benedetto Croce, the burden of artistic meaning lies not with the representation, but with an expressive representation. Expressive representation. True art appeals to the imagination, whereas bravura on its own the ability to draw, to paint, may lead nowhere beyond the surface. Here we have on your left, Turner, making use of extraordinary hues, almost verging on the abstract, while the landscape on your right hand side is just a representation. A beautiful representation, if you like. After the invention of photography, traditional pictorial visualization has increased certain expectations from the public, from the public, sort of now a competition with photography. The artist was expected to be on equal level with photography. While, while freedom of expression 
requires certain responsibilities from the part of the artist. So the artist has to be honest with him or herself. What we are seeing here is qualitative art, qualitative art. Ernst Ludwig, Baiting Newton, George Rouault, Christ Insulted. Carl Schmidt, a landscape. Mark Rothko, an abstract. And why? Why expression should be considered as a value? Because works of art express emotions. Express emotions. Whatever the subject. Even the most common things, a still life, a landscape, a pair of shoes, Van Gogh, a chair, a jar with flowers, whatever, whatever the subject, art should always refer to the human experience. The latter, the latter acquaints us with the human conditions, the human conditions. And this is art. This is art. This is art. This is what I retain as the meaning of spirituality in art. This is what I had to say. So, so now we see some photos of, of my works. So these are abstracts that I did around um, 2009. This, this exhibition was very much and still is very much close to my heart. The way 2014, I mean, the subject is not quite um, appropriate for, for this time of the year, because this, these are the Stations of the Cross. But these works are very, very close to my heart. So we see some details of the Stations of the Cross. This was an exhibition uh, organized by the Indina Cathedral, the Biennale, Christianity, Spirituality and the others. So it was 2015. And I created these four quite large format paintings. So Christianity, the spirituality of religions, not only Christianity, and and this this union with other religions. So the one on your left, the orange one. So this is what I believe in Christianity. And I I see it as if looking at an icon, the gold, the presence of the gold, the shape of the fish, and then I will explain. The red one, because religions, as you know, create conflicts that can bring that and a solution. I don't know what to say, but tolerance is the only way how religions, how religions unite themselves. These are two of an exhibition um, which I had in the Parliament building in 2018, Suritli Spirito, the same. Here I used only 
three main colors. I mean, the white, grays, black, and yellow. And this is, this is, I mean, I, I went to this thing because I used to be taught that yellow and black does, does not go together because it create, it create smudge. But is it true? Or is it the old school? So can these two colors be brought together? And I think yes. Because life, life is like, is like this. I mean, you have the dark and light. You have transparent and the opaque. You have the good and the bad living together in this world, living together. So this was my my prime intention after this, the, the, this collection. So these two colors considered not to be mixed because they create their the colors can live together. Because we experience this type of feeling every day, all around. This is one of my words that I'm going to be presenting next year. In June, July. Um, and again, I usually work on a team. Um, because it's important. It is very important. And before I, I do something, I would ask myself, why are you doing this? What is the scope of doing this? And before answering the question, it's useless to fill the canvas with color. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Spratt. Thank you. Proceed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. It's the picture for you. I can't name the seed now. Hi. Can you hear me? Mr. Yes. Michael. Perfect. Um, Mr. Spaniel, thank you very much for that. Uh, 20, call me 20. 20, all right, 20. Thank you so much for that amazing presentation. Honestly, I think we're all still taking in um, both the, the, the teaching you shared with us um, about this, the way spirituality and art has evolved in some ways and continues to evolve. Uh, and then also that that insight into, into your work and even that's that preview of, of work uh, to come. So that, that was very beautiful. Thank you very much. Um, I wonder whether, so the format for everybody listening, I'm going to ask a few questions. We're going to talk about some of the work that we, we've just seen, and then it'll be open to the floor and um, Twani will answer very kindly all of your questions. Um, so this is just to get the ball rolling a bit. Um, I know that it's out of season, like you said, but um, I, I have admired the, uh, the Stations of the Cross for a while, and I think most of us who, I mean, University of Malta, you, uh, those images have been seen by generations of graduates. So I, I'd like to, to know a bit more about why they're so special to you and what went into creating them. Um, mm -hmm. uh, um. It was always something that I that I um, wanted to do. Um, but it was it was an amazing project because the process in itself it was really interesting. So of course I did some research. I mean I looked at other versions of the stations of the cross which are not um, um, figurative, for example, the one by um, 
Barnett Newman. This is a famous, famous collection. In abstract. But I was always heck, um, intrigued with this with this theme. Um, obviously, as I said in my presentation, you have to be very honest with, with yourself because here we have 15, 14 plus one, 15 stations of the cross. So you have to be honest in meditating each and one of them because there is a narration now behind them. Christ before Pilate, Christ carrying the cross, Christ fell under the cross, crucifixion and, 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 and. So you have to be honest with yourself about the narrative of each station. So although it is obviously in abstract form, for example, um, someone told me, but, but where is Pilate? But wh where is the Veronica? And I said, uh, if I wanted to show the Veronica or Pilate, I would have drawn them. But so you have to be sincere that what you are putting on the canvas reflects your inner feelings. If no, you have to scrap them. In fact, during the process, for example, meditating, I don't know, the third station, Christ falling under the cross. In the process, which took around three years to complete, in some instances, I, I found myself narrating another station, for example, the seven. And then, and then I stop and I said, look, look, this, this, um, uh, this image, the, the, these emotions, which I'm putting in on the canvas, reflects more the seventh station than the third one. And that is the honesty that I, I mean, it's a must that you shift your thoughts on the other station. Obviously, I mean, research, research um, uh, is always crucial because you have you have to feel the subject. Um, I remember uh, once um, someone said to me, but if a Muslim goes um, into the University of Japan, what are, going, what are these stations of the cross going to tell him? But I really don't know. I really don't know. But I believe that what I, what I put on the canvas, irrelevant of sacred or there is something that you can grab. If, if no, I fail. If no, I fail. But there is something that you can grab. Not necessarily sacred, because I mean, if if we are speaking about say um, uh, the sacred aspect, I mean, you have to know the stations, you know, first station, pilot. I mean, some who visited this exhibition. No, they don't know the stations of the cross. So what is the first station? Christ in the garden of the Gethsemane. No. You see? So you have to be informed about the subject. You have to read a lot about the subject. You have to research what was done about the subject. One of, one of these is, is the famous, as I said, um, uh, uh, Barnett Newman. And I have to mention also Austin Camilleri, um, uh, the semi-abstract um, uh, via cruces in, in, in Nashar. So, so I, I, I really appreciate those those um, uh, um, inputs. But this is it. This is it. So and and it is very close to my to my heart because I was very sincere with myself. Very mm -hmm. sincere with myself. Otherwise, how can I yeah, be sincere I... with the viewer? Uh -huh. Thank you so much. Uh, th this is so beautiful to hear you say. Uh, in fact, maybe I can ask a follow on question to this. When you talk about this journey of authenticity, it sounds a lot like, I, I don't know whether you would agree with me, like the the tradition of, of creating icons, uh, which was such a major part of the, the Eastern Church, but also in the West. Um, and where where the artist goes in this meditative kind of way in order to produce these works of spiritual intensity. And like you said, even in your talk, I mean, that that young woman who had a completely different impression of the work, but was still deeply touched by it. So knowing the narrative, the content is not quite as important as engaging with the process. Ushek. So That's right. maybe you can 
tell us a bit more, uh, if you would, please, about your meditative process. I know it's an intimate subject, but no, no, I, I, I can tell you why because I, so I believe that when you tackle such such a team, which we know, I mean, very well through um, uh, figurative figurative um, uh, works. Um, I believe that you you cannot go directly to the abstract form without meditating the physical aspects of the of the team, the physical physical aspect. So I can give you an example. For example, um, Christ encountering encountering the, the, the Veronica. So what I did and this and what I did first was printing printing many images of the face of Christ printing one upon the other one upon the other until until it became abstracted so from the physical to the abstraction because as i said this is this is a narration so so and i did this process in all of them in all of them in all of them so starting from the physical a drawing whatever a, uh, a sign and then and then um, and and this uh, took a couple of days and then color upon color image upon image it, it became an abstract work and then you will sort of refine what you what you um, uh, what you did I mean the image will immediately speak to you Will image speak to you and this is the encounter between the artist and the image and this is the inner feeling that i mentioned in my in my presentation otherwise it is all on the surface all on the surface May I, so wow the, yes uh, and this makes me want to ask you a question about some, another part of your life which maybe we we didn't hear uh, as much about but this relationship between likeness and expressive representation in the work of the restorer, restoration, because I, I guess that's a really interesting negotiation that, I mean, restorers have to make. Mm -hmm. it, Maybe we could is. learn a bit more about that. No, it is because it's part of my life. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is my job. But it's enriching, very enriching. I think when you are in close proximity of a masterpiece, in, in close proximity of masterpiece, you will learn and you will feel, you will feel what this is abstract. I mean, the the the, the genuine thing, the the great the, the 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 greatness of such artists. For example, Christian mentioned Le Valentin. Oh, incredible. With Oren. So when you are face to face with these artworks, you will learn automatically, even seeing the brushwork, even seeing how they modeled certain certain areas of the painting, how they take you, you see immediately that there was something beyond the image that was assisting the artist. And this is enriching. I mean, I'm 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 very fortunate. I have to say it. I'm very fortunate, and I learned, and I learned a lot. Once a teacher here, I used he used to he used to um, teach, and he said, "Twani, um, uh, we had to do now that you are a restorer because you always you always use great tonalities." He said, "I mean, but this was a comment. But the thing is that facing." From close proximity, works of art, um, which are masterpieces, it's a fortune. It is a fortune. It's a blessing. It sounds like it. You're 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 learning uh, directly from the source, so from the yes, from the, yes, the master. I mean, himself. if you don't learn from the source, I mean, from I mean, it should not happen. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. these works of art have have the inner spirit in them mm -hmm. of artists who like Caravaggio as I mentioned mm -hmm. they were real artists real yes. artists and they in found fact, themselves in the history of art 
about the Caravaggio, maybe just a, a small point when you brought up the death of the Virgin. Uh -huh. And then you showed us your work where there was this marriage of black and yellow, this idea uh -huh. of the dirty thing, but still finding the beauty and the sacred. Maybe you could tell us a bit more about that, because uh, that's a very interesting idea, this this finding harmony in something which... Uh, because a, because it was when I used to um, um, to come here, I mean, they used to tell us, I mean, with good intentions, uh, try not to mix or avoid mix yellow with black, because these two colors, they produce smudge, they produce uh, the um, dirty gray, so... And, uh, and I said to myself, I is this true? Is this true? So I, I, I went for it. I went for it. I mean, if you don't know how to use these colors well, yes, you can produce smudge. But if you know how to use these colors well, you produce what? Beautiful smudge. Beautiful smudge. Um, I I do not want to 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 speak about my work. I mean because I mean this has to be judged by 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 uh, by the viewers, by other persons. But that's that's what I got. I mean I was happy with the result. So I have I mean so that is not true because as I said this reflects our life. So the bad and the ugly. Um, the translucent and the opaque. Mm -hmm. We are living in one world, one world. We are living together. So uh, we can say, all right, this I like and this I don't like. This I prefer and this I don't prefer. But, mm -hmm. but still, I mean, we are judging these things. Yes. And at the same time, this is highly subjective because we are different persons. This and in it. fact, uh, Mr. Spaniel, the twenty, the, the 20, this coming 20, together, 20. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, this coming together of uh, of different things. Uh, I mean, it's even in the work you you mentioned um, this interfaith kind of inter uh, the the, the uh -huh. way Christianity and the other, you know, this black and um, and uh -huh. uh, yellow and beauty being found in that. So maybe as a final question, because I know there are people who want to ask you questions from the floor. So as a final uh, question. Um, where do you see Malta right now? The, the artistic community in particular, the fact that we are becoming so, um, uh, you know, so diverse uh, in terms of, of influences, but also people um, on the islands. Do you see this kind of um, black and yellow mixing in our... It should, it should be like that. It should mm -hmm. be like that. It should be, but we is are... it? Hmm? It should be, but is it? Do you think that that's where we're at or do we need to... We are growing. We mm -hmm. are growing. Okay. So we did a lot of, of I mean, we're, we're, we're managing to, um, uh, how am I going to put it? We are part now of an international community of artists. We are small, yes, we are very small, but I think we are managing to, to grab and ideas from the rest of the continent. I mean, we have artists who are really good. I, I really admire them. So, although we are small and although we are limited, Maltese artists have their limitations compared with other artists in the continent, we are progressing a lot. So, you find everything, but you find this thing, even in the continent, you find people that, that they are happy representing things. Happy. A landscape, a still life. But this, you find it in the continent, in the regions. So, you f so we, we're growing. We're growing. Obviously, with our pace, because the circumstances are, are in many, in many cases, very limited. Because, I mean, Maltese artists, most of them do not have financial aid as artists in the continent have, I mean, to produce, I don't know, massive works of art installations, whatever. But we are progressing. And what we're doing is valid, is valid as well. Absolutely. And uh, and I think, um, 
I think it's very clear that you are a, a very important part of that history here in Malta, especially where, as we learned more today, when it comes to the way spirituality has informed expressive abstraction, but um, but also just art in, in its purest form here on these islands. So thank you very much for, for answering my questions. Issa, we're Thanks. going to open it to the rest of the guests and um, I'm Bye, handing okay. it over to the, to the office. Thanks, once again. So I invite any participants who have any relevant questions to do so now, please. We have one which has been posted in the chat. Shall I read that maybe out loud? And then other people can maybe uh, ask their questions by putting their hand up and they can speak them. So the question, this is from Isaac Warrington. Uh, during the presentation, you had mentioned the idea of spirituality across multiple religions. How would you define spirituality in a non-Christian context? Yes, I, I, I mean, my presentation was all about this. Because spirituality is not related only to beliefs or, or sacred or a sacred content. Spirituality is what we feel inside ourselves. It could be inserted in a religious or sacred content, as I explained. I mean, the case of Giacomo of Manzu, yes, but spirituality is what we feel. Apart from sacred and whatever, what we feel, it could be a sacred, it could be profane, but this is spirituality. I mean, the apple by Cezanne is, I mean, I don't know, just an apple. But when you see his work, you can feel that behind the image there is this spiritual feeling, spiritual feeling. So spirituality is not is not um, related only to the sacred, because I mean, this is this is sort of um, uh, a misnomer. No I mean, one associates spirituality with the sacred. It, it's not the case. It is not the case. Well, a good sacred work of art should be spiritual. This is it. A good sacred work of art should be spiritual. Okay. Any other questions, please? Can I ask if a recording is going to be available? Because I missed the first part. And the, the, the lecture is quite profound. I'm still gra grappling to understand um, the true meaning. And I do have a question, but I think it's stupid, so I'm, I'm keeping back. That's oh, all right. <laughs> yes. so, so, let so me ask. Are... Let me ask it. Even at the risk of it being stupid. Yet <laughs> um, is, is spiritual and being spiritual, a piece of art being spiritual and being sacred are two distinct things. Um, the the yes. spiritual uwa is sentiment in turn. That's right. Express mod taiepo creative. That's right. Did I get it right? It, that's right. Allura kul work, kul work of art is how you say kujaya le stupidajni. Allura kul work of art liya executed taiba. Uh, did that, you have to define executed taiba, this, because a, a good work of art, because we relate with what we see. I, I gave the example, um, Cezanne still alive with apples and the image of the sacred heart of Jesus. So one is sacred as a subject and the other one is profane. But spirituality is 100% in the still life of Cezanne and not 1% in the image of the heart of Jesus. 
because the heart of Jesus, as it is executed, it's only on the surface. There is nothing. I mean, and that you can feel. I, I, I said it in my presentation. It is difficult. It is difficult. And it is through our cultivation and education in the arts that we can, that we can arrive um, to a true judgment of whether a work of art is genuine or not. But if a work of art is genuine and you and we can relate with it, you can see it, you can feel that it is spiritual. It is spiritual. If it is not spiritual, it's lacking something. It's lacking, lacking something, yes. Okay, I don't I don't know if you defined spiritual um, at the beginning of the lecture. I missed that part. Did you define it? That spiritual is, I mean, what you what we feel in ourselves, because all of us have inner feelings. So even the artist. So this inner feeling has to be part and parcel of the image. Of the image, and that makes a work of art really and truly a work of art. No. Otherwise, it's on the surface. I gave examples in my presentation. I mean, the Turner thing. I mean, the um, uh, the portraits of Van Gogh and Lady Diana. I mean, you can, you can see the difference. One is the realization of, of the person, because there is the inner feeling of the artist. And the other one is a representation on the surface. The likeness is there, but no more than that. No more than that. As I see it. Am I clear? Yes, thank you. Thanks. I believe there is Mr. Felice who would like to ask a question. Mr. Felice, can you turn on your microphone, please? Why can't I? Because my screen went off. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Yes, yes, sir. Well, uh, some echoes. But in some, there are echoes. Yes, 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 yes. What to what I would like to ask is how, if you have commissioned work. Mr. Felice, I, think I believe you have two windows which are open. You must close one of them, please. I see. I think so. I have. Forget about the question. I think I've created a problem. No, no, it's all right. If you have. You can write it in, in the chat. I have a commission to work. You can write it down on the chat. We cannot uh, hear. We're not hearing. So I think Mr. Felice uh, was wasn't able to um, to resolve his issue, but hopefully he will be soon. Um, is anybody else uh, interested in asking a question? I mean, I'm. Uh, I'm still thinking about some of, of, of what um, has just been asked and answered. Um, uh, when Twani was talking about this idea of uh, representation, what came to me, now my background is in theology, so this might explain it, was um, th this idea of humanity being created in the image and likeness. 
and how the likeness is more of maybe the, this um, appearance and the image is something which is deeper, which is represented and which exists in, in the, the work of art, the thing which deserves that kind of a name. So um, there's a lot to think about. Um, so if any of you would like to take this opportunity to speak with the artist. So and we have some people commenting in the chat, I see. So Doris Vella uh, um, 20 says, you seem to be defining that spirituality is a source that comes from the inner feelings of the true artist. That's right. That's right. This expression of recognition that an audience is bound to grasp. Yes, so Doris has, has, has grasped it. Uh, thank you, Doris. That's what I um, believe. Mm -hmm. That's what I believe. Yes. Wonderful. I wonder if Mr. Felice. I got. Or... Hey, there we are. Welcome back. Are you hearing me correctly now? Are you hearing me? Yes, yes, yes. We are yes, hearing yes. you. No. I, I'll, I'll type it. You're hearing? Yes, yes it's, and yeah. we can see you as well. So please go for it, Mr. Felicia. Right. Um, undoubtedly, you have commissioned works. When you do have a commissioned work, how do you reconcile your self-expression with the wishes of whoever, of the commissioner, whoever commissioned the work? I tell you, I try very hard. And I try and I try and I try. And although there are sort of limitations because because the commission is is a commission, but a true artist. Let me give you an example, not to mention myself. Look what Michelangelo did in the Sistine Chapel. He was commissioned. But he did what he did. So true artists do find their way, even if they are commissioned, do find their way, because if not, that's only an exercise. No more, no less. It's only an exercise in drawing, in painting, in sculpture, whatever. If they do not find their way, it's only an exercise. But true artists do find their way. As I said, this, this, Michelangelo Sistine Chapel. I mean, he was he was commissioned to paint the vault of the Sistine Chapel in a very traditional manner, a set of apostles. But Michelangelo managed to do it his way, and this is what makes an artist genuine. So yes, I mean. Although there are limitations, a true artist should find his way through. And I repeat, if not, if not, it's only an exercise. It's only an exercise. Do okay. you feel the conflict, though? Do you feel the conflict? The, 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 I mean, yes, of course. I mean, you, you have to you have to sort of struggle a little bit. And uh, what? You have to say, yes, I will do this. And at the end, you will do something else. And then, but, why? but you have to struggle. Because otherwise, if you don't do this, what? Do you know how, how, how efforts you need to, let's say, paint, paint um, a cupola or what? I mean, a lot of effort, a lot of work. For what? If there is no effort from the artist to produce something which he feels he should put it on the canvas, for what? For money? Yes. For what? Many work? Yes, of course. I mean, it's a hard work. And I tell you, because, because I, I did some works. So if you do not struggle, you do that for... So you have to struggle. That's my answer. That's my answer. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK. Any more questions, please, from the participants? Thank you. That's it.
I would like to ask one question. Yes. Regarding this term of spirituality, I think in the modern arts, this term is not anymore so common. But uh -huh. hearing you, it seems the only real artwork has to be done with feelings, with spirituality. So how how do you see this term in this modern world of art today? Is it really a term that is probably too old, too lost, or no, do we not. have to rediscover it? Or what it's, do you say? It, to that? It, it's not. Uh, spirituality is ongoing. What is now redundant is the word sacred, that yes, sacred. So, so uh, many, many, many are not equated with the sacred. They don't want to see sacred things, sacred. But spirituality, but spirit, spirituality, yes, it continues to live because it's, it's part and parcel of, of every artist's feeling. That has to be there, by the way, because one can cheat, for example, and present a work as spiritual. But then, but, but you will immediately notice that, that if it's not spiritual, you can feel it. You can feel it because, I repeat, we relate with what we see. At the end, what we see? Paint on canvas, representing I don't know what. What we see is clay, what brought, so the material, the material itself is the authenticity of the artwork. But that has to be bad, uh, what blended with, with oh, the inner it. spiritual feelings. Well, okay. So this, the word sacred okay. is redundant, yes. But, the, but spirituality has to go on, has to go on. And it's still going on. No, it's still going on. Can someone with the mic open um, kindly can it up? We can hear a lady speaking. Please turn off your microphone. Thank you. Um, any questions, please? Yes, I, I have I have uh, an observation more than a question. Um, I am agreeing a lot about how every artist here, because I am assuming that we are we are a gather of artists here, and uh, and if if uh, twenty is uh, is defining what spirituality is and what sacredness is. They are all related in the very art experience. That means that art experience is very pragmatic. That means mm -hmm. that while the art is being done, there is the expression of the true artist. That's mm -hmm. why um, the commercial Santi, Pal Dok, Al Tajasu, Oek. Dok ma yif aw, she's just spirituali. Aj dok yiju, mushta issa fil moment. Daku ma shahaja tal passato, ma dnish narawa on pala shahaja. Of the. Li et yoh roch mil alp tal artist. Alura, li yijriwa, li yijriwa, li yakil vera artist se ikun. Fil moment, et i medita, palma beda jajt tuani, et i medita fil moment, automatikament il awa gbira tal individu, li iġi umbat fespressjoni universali izjiet min li individu, da jip aċ izjiet individu, toħroċ, tal imo. Na, fil-miak perfettament. Li tiġi spirituali u tiġi sagra. No, but me at perfettament, perfettament. As Dicky, yeah, a philosophy, a water colors. That's one purpose. That's exactly. one purpose. So That's it's all, purpose. all very pragmatic. It's all very much in the here and now. 
Ecco, no, per me è perfettamente. Prosegue. È un piacere di ascoltare le cose femminili. Alle Sina, per esempio, ho molte tesi di John Dewar. Le Kitab for art as an experience. And, uh, and, and this is exactly what we're talking about. Ecco. L'arte è tal'artist fil moment. O metta in tit con restauratrici o restauratur, a scena che è l'esperienza un cata restaur, ma spagnol, ma tuani, in self. Ti sta ti fem, da che il hinge giara, wap l'artist, che in etiame il performance spirituali fu di clarity. O atma t'kunti ya, ma infatti, infatti, u jitfaha em barra, bħala espressjoni ti ya, un nifsu. Ecco, l'arti spirituali, iġi nita, għifri inkluz l'arti sagra, teġ għalix t'wildet min din il-bejta, għadar west intesa. Kolla, kolla iġi arti sagra, kolla iġi arti sagra, dik li tiġi b'mot meditatif. Jew, jew, skużani, jew bil-maqlub, arti li, 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 jew bil-maqlub, arti li ja spiritualment maħduma, għada pitada, tara d-dawl. Għan eżempju, Karavaggio, Karavaggio, kam u għbir Karavaggio, Karavaggio bieda iġi skopert fin 1950s, riċenti, imma, meta jkun emmi r-ruħ għol work of art, għada pitada, t-libera ruħa, toħroċ, xaħħħħħ, t-tallata fil-wiċ. Eta jna, Karavaggio, 1950, ta' għifiri, kamil, għaw, riċenti, 1950. U bħalu kien hemm rux maħta ta' artist joħra muġ bis fil-flarti viziva, emma fil-muzika, f-kollox. Jitilaw fil-wiċ, u jidju skopertu, jidju studiati, għalix, għalix hemm xaħħħħ, għalix li t-stati studia, jekk ma' għandek xej, bħal maħt fil-presentation, jekk inta ma' għandek xej, xtati, kif satiħu? Bet karot bim, bet karot werk. Bix inti tijuhu, jirdu kun jemxa ġa xtati. Otherwise, neki, u jaddi kem jaddi zmin, għada bitada, l-arti spirituali, mussagra, l-arti spirituali, titla fil-weċ. Għax tibqa immortali, għaza? Tiġi. Ma tistax tinħa badik, ma tistax. Xaħħat, xaħħat, jinno ta, għat najdi l-kom, Roberto Longhi, 1950, Iġi fit-tella l-karavaġġo fejn iħat il-lum, il-lum kif s-sem il-kalma karavaġġo t-tinzil għarku b-tek. Imma muġ dijem kienek? Vera jew le? Eki? Grazzi Tony. Grazzi l-ilkom. Anybody else, please? So, um, yeah, uh, I'll ask question or, or comments and, and I think we can also conclude uh, with, with 20 sunset and um, so I'm not it's true to the presentation um, used even in the, the selection of, of words uh, used um, for example the idea of beautiful math and, and instantly I related it with, with sort of the creation of humanity okay. <laughs> um, and as described in, 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 in Christian uh, iconography and texts. Um, and I wondered, um, you also emphasized um, sort of um, the idea of personal expression. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wondered also how a tradition um, can support like, uh, a religious tradition can support that, that self-expression in terms of iconography, in terms of images, and how important is it then to transform those images into a personal language as well? Ecco, but this comes uh, only from, from the formation of the inner soul of the artist, because we know, I mean, traditional iconography in sacred art and, and, and other germs. Ma tanċ teftaħ l-ekorizzonti. 
hija staġnata ħafna. Iġifiri, and you find opposition. And when I say opposition, is opposition. I know it because I went through it. Emma l-artist vera, ma jirriċa ta' għalbu, irtib għaddej in order to em these traditional ideas jitrasformom, jitrasformom. Iġifiri, mux għat najt l-maħzijena daw, emma jekk, jekk ma jġus trasformati biex jġu updated ma zmienna u ma mejtejn. Iġifiri, let's take sacred images. Jekk għan għanib għaw nirrepetu l-istess formula f-sacred images un ħarsu l-ura, għallura dikija mejta, dikija għaqfa tem. Emma għan artisti, għan artisti, għan 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 li trasformawa in something li għada ta' għanx maħna. Għalix, għalix fija ma kienx jem bis l-ability, the ability to paint and to draw, emma kienem xaħa ġoħra. Għax the ability to paint and to draw, kifħa ta' dik, ti għafu s-service. That is craft. 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 Għal minti ti taħallem ta' meġħa ġoħra, jien nalmek pitter, jien nalmek z-zom il-dik. That is craft. Emma xa ta' għamil b-dik. So it has to be the quality, il-kualita li jinti taħamil bil-kraft, bil-kraft, the ability has to be there. As I said, narġi nirrepetija u manna jiex nirrepetija. We relate with what we see. Jiena ma tanħarris fanna fin le s-safta San Juan. Ma l-le għen najt. Aw, nek, aw, muċ zeba bis. Jem, mem xaħġa taħt zeba. Jem, li spirtu ta' zmienu. Li tant kien tajjeb, dal kas mattija preti, li transformaħ, li għadu jajx maħna, sallu. Għadu jajx. Jib għaj kaxkar. Mux il-kas bil-maqlub jak inti tħarres l-ura. U ti provo timi ta' tekniks u formulas li ma tistax ta' jiex omax l-spirtu ta' xommej imbidel. Imbidel dak li izzminijiet tal-barok. Mu mix izzminijiet ta'na. Għal rama nistax jimmu l-ura bidjo mu hrajin mentri dak izmien imbidel, mux mux taje imbidel, trasforma ruħu f-xaħa ġohra. This is the story of art, the history of art. Dej jem ti trasforma ruħa. Emmini għajt, li għawer għawer is, uħa dekadenti. So what? Yes, dekadenti. Għax il-valuri jekk, uħax jemmet mornem, uħax mornem, uħa dekadenti. It has to show. It has to show in today's art. Għax l-arti, mux kifa tijen ta' ġifiri, ma ġifiri, l-arti tit tirrifletti zmien taħħa. If not, mem xej, uwa uxra bis, uwa, call it what you want, I mean, fanny, ability, I mean, laħwa kebe pittar taħjub xu, what I think. Imma, jek mem xej l-ruħ ta' zmiena, u l-ruħ ta' zmiena, uwa xiftit jew izdekadenti, so, ma dini għal eksibixin li, li għan iprovan immis, kel bħan minna rejt s-sana d-dijħla. ġivri, jekk, jekk, jekk kienti ma l-artist ma jarraf, xo minu ta' ġivri, sta kulli kbar qaddis. Jekk l-artist ma jarraf, tiet dinja tal-lum, ija, imva, in, 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 imva zada belf idea, belf idea, wihet jajtek, wihet jajtek, jekk ku mux xa jinsereċ xiruħu fijom, fija din, għank jekk ma jqabbilx maħħum, l-artist jok sa tkun mejta. Sa t-mawt l-artit jow. Għivri, għank jekku ma jaqbilx ma ċartu edeja, irit jur il-juq jat em. Irit jur il-juq jat, jaj, f-din id-dinja. In this world, tal-lum. Full of chaos and full of... Semmu li t-rejdu. Irit jur il-jat em. U l-in kwa t-għolta, għivri, jitqat nitkellem il-punto di fissata artist li n-prattika l-astrat. Taro għanki min n-prattika l-figurativ. L-istess. Irit jur li jgħadġu din id-dinja. Jekk ma jurijiex, jekk ma jurijiex, mela leħen fil-dazet, ma jisibaw ħat. Irit jurija. Irit jurija bix xol tijow. I mean, you cannot expect every artist to stay beside his painting and 
whoever visit this way think he will uh, let, let me see I'm not they read night tech they read night tech they read night tech much better they did what is the stage what is the stage now not a lot to tell them only on a different member shall face because you only as otherwise is you just like only the most finest um just more ideas yeah can money transform my own style yeah man not to look yeah okay let me bomb a level in my life the matrix mean you ought to speak up a slurred to the head scont il feeling to the click on per all feeling to the click on it did trigger that let yara or that at that let yara am an inner feeling and get pushed you out the artist the fish you go to go to artist so what? Let's get them back. So you're a cool artist. Um, that like when you do some, or or that bajrali again. Um, or what's your name? You do some. Int kont et tahsepe. Illa huana ilak stilla. Ashin tir nashi lak ta rash kaliyin. Em ma dik tijri. That bajrali lady. Ma tukot et na ma dik dik dak stations of the cross. Em ma otherwise if you hear, int it more put them the work of art. When to go menna, that le at cost. I just imagine if I should take, yet me should take it. What do I say? Just that I don't know what I'm going to do. That bombing, I don't know what the landscape is. That is, but this is only on the surface. Let me check now. Do I know? Can I'm going to do so? Can I'm going to do that? That's my adjective that we use to describe the surface of things. Cross it, twenty. Well, really, really, it was. For me, coming from a different art, I could relate really very well from what you said other, of this relation between the inner self and what you expose. So thank you really very much. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Umberto and Glorian for coordinating this. And I wish you all a good a spiritual a festive season. How do you say it? Like wow. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Happy Christmas. Yeah. This recording Bye. will be on Thank the official website for all to see and watch. Thank you. Thank you.